Um, today is uh, my uncle's yard site. I will say some Devere Agada and Devere Halacha, and I will try to use it to talk about one aspect of my uncle's life. The, um, the Haggadah starts with the Halach Manya. This is the poor man's bread that our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. And then we, then we invite everybody in and, uh, and we say, L'shan Abba, Bar the Israel. Now, when we say, Kol dichvin yesiv yechol, kol ditzrich yesiv yiftach, we invite everybody in. It's really a statement of policy. The door is closed, no one hears. But it's a policy, an attitude. The question is, why do we say that? Only Pesach at night. The Gemara mentions that we're Amorayim of Kahana, who would say it before every meal. After all, the mitzvah of inviting people, whoever is hungry, applies at all, on all days of the year. So why is it that on Pesach night, there is a special attempt to demonstrate our desire to help those who don't have enough for their own needs. And there is a famous Zohar. The Zohar doesn't uh, mention that question, but I think with what the Zohar says, we could answer the question. The Zohar says that the three regalim, Pesach, Shavuos, and Sukkot, correspond with the three patriarchs. Pesach corresponds with Avram, with Abraham. Shavuos corresponds with Yitzchak. And Yaakov corresponds with Sukkot. Now I'm going to focus, obviously, about Pesach. Now it's very easy to understand why Pesach corresponds with Avram. Because what is the significance of Pesach? True. Pesach, our slavery ended. True, we were no, sub, no longer subject to the whips of our taskmasters. True, we were able to leave Egypt. But greater than all of that was the fact that Pesach, if we were separated, Goy Mikarib Goy, one nation from the other. And this is reflective of the life of Avram Avinu, of our patriarch Abraham. Avram, perhaps, on one hand, he is the greatest human being that there is, always concerned about others. He wouldn't, he couldn't eat a meal without standing at his door, even when he was in pain to see if there's a passerby who he could share his meal with. But nevertheless, Avram Avrech Echad, Avram Ha'ivri, Avraham the Hebrews, on one hand, it was Me'eva Hanar. He was from the other side of the river. And that in itself denotes the idea of separation. When HaKadosh Baruch Hu separated, when God separated Avram from his family, it wasn't enough for him to, to stay on the same side of the river. There had to be a physical barrier, a, 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 a border 
we know in the newspapers today, a border that is not a barrier really is insignificant. So Avram, it was necessary for Avram to have a physical barrier. That's why the Haggad emphasizes of passing Yeshua that God took Avram from the other side of the river in a sense to make it more difficult for Avram to co-mingle with the people he was involved previously, with the people whose ideology was rooted in idolatry. Originally, our ancestors were involved in idolatry. So the, the Avram represents the idea of separation. But separation doesn't mean lack of concern. Avram was the most concerned. But separation means the idea of going down your own path. And your own path might have concern for others and should have concern for others. And perhaps I even have more concern for others. But it was his own path. The foundation of his ideology could not be rooted in his past. It was total separation in our, from a certain perspective. And in a sense, that was the exodus from Egypt. It was Goy Miker of Goy, one nation from another nation. And, but I think there is a famous question that many ask. And that question is, why is it that Moshe Rabbeinu, the one who was the, appointed by God to lead the Jewish people out of Egypt and through the desert up to the borders of Israel, is not mentioned. There's one quick reference, which is not an essential part of the Haggadah when we talk about the exodus of Egypt, it would be like, and even, uh, talk, it's like talking about the Revolutionary War without mentioning George Washington. Why is it that Moshe Rabbeinu is not mentioned? And the famous answer that's given by every, everybody is, because one of the basic ideas in the Haggadah is Aniva lo Malach, Aniva lo Ashaliyah. It was I, God, who, who redeemed you. It was, not, it was not the messenger. But I think there is another answer. I think the central focus of the Haggadah is not so much on what Moshe Rabbeinu did, but on the contrary, it's about Avram. It's about the selection of Avram, the commitment of God to Avram, and the fulfillment of that commitment. And that's why is the introduction, one of the introductions to the Parsha Bikurim. It talks about the separation of Avram from, from all those that are around him. And, but I think, so, so that's the reason why a Pesach is associated with Avram. But I think it's more than just that. And I want to, that's, I want to focus the share on this point. The Das Ganim Balatosphus asks the question, we know that Avram, besides being married to Sarah, he had another wife. It was Hagar. And then 
he was forced or circumstances necessitated the hugger to leave his house. And then later after Sarah dies, Avram marries, Torah tells us, a woman whose name is Keturah. And our sages tell us that Keturah was actually Hagar. He took Hagar back. Now, who was Hagar? Hagar was the daughter of Pharaoh, Pharaoh's daughter. She was an Egyptian. And we know there is a prohibition on the Jewish people to marry those who were from, in, uh, uh, from ancient Egyptian descent. So the, the, uh, the question is raised. Paro was certainly an Egyptian. Hagar, his daughter, was certainly an Egyptian. And we know that the Avos, the patriarchs, and Avram was certainly a patriarch that Avram was, was, was one of the Avos, one of the patriarchs. So he observed all the mitzvahs of the Torah, according to our sages. There might have been some exceptions, but a special reason has to be given. So how was Avram able to marry Torah, who was really Hagar, who was both a originally he she was an Egyptian and the maidservant. Tosis doesn't mention the maidservant part that the Riva mentions. And Tosfa says the Tosfa says gives two answers. One answer was because Avram was a gear. Avram went through conversion. And the halacha is that a woman of Egyptian descent is allowed to marry, is allowed, to, uh, a, 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 a gear is allowed to marry a woman of Egyptian, of, a, a, of Egyptian descent. And the second answer is, it was al Hadibor. It was a directive from God that he should that he should that he should marry her. And the question the que the question is, and then the Riva asks the same question as the Daskenim Ibalatosphis, except the Riva when he asks the question. The Riva asks it not just how Avram was able to marry Torah when he took her back as a wife, but the Revi asked the question, how was Avram able to marry her the first time when she was still called Hagar? She was still an Egyptian. So it seems that there is a dispute between the Riva and Tosfus as to what point Avram was considered, Abraham was considered a patriarch of the Jewish people. In other words, according to Tosfus, he only became a patriarch of the Jewish people later on, after his first marriage. So Tosfus is only troubled about the second marriage, whereas the Riva felt that Avram was considered a patriarch even before the first marriage. And we have to understand, we understand Tosus' opinion, as I mentioned before. He could only be a patriarch once he went through conversion, once he had his brisket. But according to the Riva, how could he, at what point did Avram become a patriarch of the Jewish people? Now, Uh, now, Tosfa said that Avram was a ger. And because he was a ger, 
he was allowed to marry Ketura, allowed to marry, allowed to marry Hagar, even though she was an Egyptian. The Briska Rav takes issue with the Tosfos. And the Briska Rav says that a Ger is someone who joins the Jewish people. But Avram was the foundation of the Jewish people. It's not that he joined the Jewish people. He became Jewish, but he did not join the Jewish people. Consequently, he says, Avram could not have been considered a Ger. He served as an example for Gerim that we see from the Gemara and Chagiga. And Gerim, in a sense, represent Avram Avinu, whether he was a Ger or he wasn't a Ger. Now, there is a difficulty, though. So according to the Briskarav, Avram was not considered a Ger. Now, however, in the Piyutim, in the Piyutim that we say uh, at the end of the Haggadah, or that many say at the end of the Haggadah, we say, Uvechein vayihi v'chatsi alayla. And so it was at midnight. Az rov nisim eflais of alayla. Then many miracles you performed at night. Barosh Hashmar is the Halayla at the head of the watch of this night. Get Sedek Nitzachto Kinechla Klo Layla. The righteous Ger, you made him victorious when Avram went to heard that his nephew Lot was taken prisoner. So Avram waged war against, against the kings that, that took Lot as prisoner. So, so and the God, and he, according to Medrash, he almost had no soldiers with him. And nevertheless, God performed the miracle and Avram was victorious in his war. And the question is, and he's referred to here as a ger tzedek, as a righteous ger. So you see that according to this piyot, Avram was a ger. So how could the briskarov suggest that Avram was not a ger? And you can say, okay, it's just the piyot. But if you check who wrote this piyot, this piyot was composed by Yanai. Yanai was a python who lived right around the time, perhaps a little bit after Hasima at Talmud. He lived in Eretz Yisrael. It's difficult to imagine that the Briska Rub would just ignore what Yanai wrote in his piyot. So I want to try to answer to answer that question. And then also, why is it when the Torah talks, the when the Python, when Yanai talks about Avram in regard to his battle on behalf of Lot? He refers to him as a ger tzedek, as a righteous ger. Okay, it's true. It's in uh, it's in Olive Bay's order, so he needed a gimel there, but he wouldn't refer to him as a ger tzedek in this piyut unless there was some special significance in Avram's status as a ger tzedek. Now, now it's obvious, now clearly, when Avram went to free Lot, that was, that was before, that was before 
the the bris milah. So it's obvious that Yanai felt like the Riva that Avram that that Avram was a gear even before the bris milah. And we have to understand how is it possible for Avram to have been a gear before the bris milah. Now, now the now there is a certain question that's it's a question that bothered me. And then I, I have uh, my uncle on my mother's side, Rabbi Yisrael Shurin, who was a Talmud from the early Talmudim, the early students of my uncle, the Rav in Boston. I, uh, my uncle, Rabbi Yisrael, was the son-in-law of Rabbi Yaakov Kamenetsky. So my uncle said, raised the question in his cipher, why is it? that when we do bris mila, where it's absolutely necessary to have a full a, a bris mila on a gear, the moel makes a bracha, lomoles hagerim ulahatif mimenu dam bris, to circumcise the gerim and to take dam bris, the blood of the covenant from him. And the, after all, at the time of the bris mila, at the time of the circumcision, he is not yet a ger. The gerus only is completed or takes place after he goes into the mikvah. So why do we say in the bracha, lomol es to circumcise the gerim? He's not yet the ger. He could say lasos milas gerus or something along those lines. Why lomos a gerim? And my uncle suggested a certain answer. It's a very nice answer, more hashkaf oriented, I think, than halachically oriented. But he mentions uh, something uh, that some say in the name of the gra. Some say in the name of Rabbi Avram Gertzedek. Rabbi Avram Gertzedek was a gear uh, in Vilna at the time of the Vilna Goen, very close to the Vilna Goen. But when he was discovered by the officials that he converted from Christianity to Judaism, so he was burnt at the stake. So the, but the Rabbi Avram Gertzedek said that the Medrash tells us, the Gemara says, that God, before he gave the Torah to the Jewish people, he went to the nations of the world and he asked them to accept the Torah, if they wanted to accept the Torah. And uh, the descendants of Yishmael said, what does it say in the Torah? And it says, in the Torah, you shouldn't steal. So they refused it. He went to, to the sons of Esau, Esau. And he asked them, do they want to accept the Torah? And they said, what does it say in the Torah? Is you should not kill. The sword. That's part of who we are. So, so the, the, the nations of the world, but Rav Avon Gerd Senek said, in each group that God went to, and then the, according to the Medrash, uh, it wasn't just the people that lived in that time, but it was the people throughout the future generations that were there also. So, so God, God, when God asked, let's say the people, the descendants of Asaph, do you want to be, do you want the Torah? And they rejected it. He says it doesn't mean that all the descendants of Asa rejected. There were a few who did not reject it. There were some among Yishmael who did not reject it. Each nation 
had a group that did not reject the Torah. And these are the souls of the future generations of Gerim. In other words, the Ger, according to Rav Avram Ger Tzedek, the Gerim of the future, they have special souls. They have the souls of Gerim, even though they did not yet undergo the process of Gerim's of conversion. So my uncle said, that's why we can make the bracha of Lomel as a Gerim, to circumcise the Gerim, Ulahatif Mimenu Dambris, and to take from him the blood of the covenant. However, I think that there is another possible answer. Uh, now, the the, uh, the 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 when we take a look, the Gemara in Krisus and the Rambam emphasizes this point. There's a certain Ramban, but I don't want to get into it now that would need to be explained in light of the Gemara. But the, the, the Gemara in Krisa says that we learn out, oh, excuse me, excuse me, the Gemara, the Gemara in Yavamis, Gemara in Yavamis says that when somebody comes and he wants to undergo conversion, so the Bezdin meets with him a number of times. At first, they push him aside. But after the Bezdin becomes convinced, that he is really committed to Torah and mitzvahs. So the Gemara says, Malinoso miyad. We convert him, we convert him right away. We convert him right away. And the Gemara says, why, does the, why is there an expression, we convert him right away? In order to emphasize that you don't postpone doing a mitzvah. That means, to convert someone who is committed to Torah and mitzvahs and has shown his commitment, and you are convinced of his commitment. So it's that type of person to perform conversion on him is a special mitzvah. And when it comes to mitzvahs, we do not postpone mitzvahs. Now, the question is, what is the mitzvah of doing Gerus? Where is this mitzvah contained? And this question troubled some of the Rishonim already. Now, the Ravid, in his Sefer Bali Nefesh, he says, we learn it out in Parshish Lechocha, that Avram, when he went to Eretz Yisrael, when he left Choran, he took with him the souls that he made in the souls that he made in, in Choran. And our sages tell us, Malame, that Avram was Megayer Gerim, Avram it, 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 it brought people through the process of Gerus of conversion. And Sarah, Sarah was Megayer, Megayeris Noshim. So the question is now, so the question is what's the mitzvah? That's just telling us a fact. Where do we see from there there is a mitzvah? But the obvious answer is that we see it's a mitzvah. In other words, it's based on the mitzvah of Avas Hashem, love of God. Because the Chazal tell us, our sages tell us, in regard to the mitzvah of love of God, our sages tell us that, that heveke Avram, be like Avram, who brought people closer to God, as it says, so in other words, according, according to the Ravid, 
the mitzvah of doing conversions is contained in the mitzvah of love of God. Because even when you, when you love somebody, you, you, you try to sing their praises. You want others to recognize the good traits. Kalvachomer ben beno shal kalvachomer. When it comes, when it comes to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of course, that doesn't mean that we have to go out and engage in missionary work. But, so this is according to the Ravid, what the mitzvah is. Now, there is a little bit of a problem with the Ravid because Avram and Haran, he did not make people Jewish. The Geras, the conversion that he did was only a conversion, a, 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 a conversion of a Ger Toshav. It was a conversion of accepting not the Torah, not special mitzvahs that were given to Jewish people, but it was a acceptance of the mitzvahs that were given to all of mankind, seven mitzvahs. Idolatry, a prohibition against idolatry, against murder, against stealing. So how could we learn out from what Avram did that there's a mitzvah to convert, that there's a mitzvah to convert people who, under, who are undergoing, uh, to, who, want, who, want, who are committed to Torah and want to become Jewish from the Pasuk by Avram in Haran. He did not do conversion making people Jewish. But the obvious answer is, at that time, when Avram was still in Haran, when he, before he left and separated himself from the members of his family, that was the highest level that a person could reach. There was no sanctity. There was no sanctity of, uh, uh, of being in his, uh, uh, of being a Jew at that point. The highest level in terms of coming close to God manifests itself in being committed to the observance of the Shiva Mitzvah of B'nai Noah. But as new levels were introduced, as new mitzvahs were being given, as new forms of closeness to God were able to take place, that mitzvah changed. And yes, sure, telling people about the importance of recognition of God, of not observing idolatry, of not killing, not being murder, murderers, not stealing. Those are all very important mitzvahs and still come within bringing people closer to God because those mitzvahs have to be observed ideally, not just because we recognize how important they are, but because we know that's what God wants us to do. But the, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's all part of the mitzvah, but included in that, and perhaps more so, is the higher levels, giving people the ability to reach higher levels, those among the nations of the world who want to join in being b'ni b'chori Yisrael, being the first sons of HaKadosh Baruch Hu of God. So helping them do that is part of, the, of this mitzvah. And so that's the sheet of the rifle. But there is another opinion. And the other opinion is the re, the re Albert, Albert Cerrone, Rabbi Huda Albert Cerrone. Rabbi Huda Albert Cerrone says, what's the mitzvah of doing conversion? On, on, a, on a Jew, on, on a non-Jew who wants to become Jewish. 
Ahavas Ager. It's the love. Because there's a special mitzvah of showing love, of showing concern, of being involved with people who undergo gayness. Unfortunately, to a large degree, sometimes that mitzvah is ignored. Sometimes there's an attitude, an unfortunate attitude an attitude that is a negation of halacha, of looking down at Geru. So the re Abel Tzoroni says that, that, the, that the, the mitzvah of doing conversion is a mitzvah of avas love of care. But it seems very strange. How could there be a mitzvah of avas ager, of love of the ger, before he becomes a gear, before he went through conversion. Mullen also miyad, when do we perform the circumcision on someone undergoing conversion before he goes to the mikvah? He's not yet a gear. So, how could there be a mitzvah of avas a gear even beforehand? Now, I think. I think that the, the, the reason is because the word ger, I once heard from my father, actually more than once, I heard many times from my father, not in regard to these questions, actually in regard to drush. My father said the word ger comes from the word gar gear, which means a seed, something that does not have roots, a ger. He enters the Jewish people he doesn't have, he does not have yet the heritage, the yichus of the Jewish people. He's the first generation Jew. So he's like a seed who has a lot of potential, but it has not yet. That seed has not yet taken root. So the word gear, gear, comes from the word gar gear, a seed. Now, there are two ways we could understand that. One way we can understand it is a gear is a gear because he cut himself off from the roots, his previous roots. He detached himself from his former society. But the other way we could say it is no. A gear is a gear because he entered the Jewish people and we, we, we revere him for that, even though he did not have roots yet in the Jewish people, in the Jewish nation. In other words, a person can become a gear before he completes the process of conversion. He can be, perhaps, a person can become a gear when he disassociates himself from his past. And I think, perhaps, we could suggest that that's the reason for the bracha. Lomo es hagerim. The bracha to be mal the gerim. Why does he make that bracha? He makes that bracha. He, he doesn't have Dushas Yisrael yet. That he'll have soon, as soon as he goes into the mikvah. But a gear he is right away. Because soon as the process of Geiris begins, he, by, by, under, by beginning the process of Geiris, in a sense, he is separating himself from his past. 
So therefore, when it comes to the circumcision, we could say, Lomoles Hagerim, to, 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 mal, to mal the Gerim. And we could say that, that, that in a sense, when we deal with the question of uh, uh, the, 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 the question of whether Avram was a gear or Avram was not a gear. So really it should be viewed from two perspectives. And then we could say, even according to Briskarov, on one hand, we could say a gear is a gear for two reasons. First of all, because he doesn't, he severed his roots in his former association in his former relationships. But he's a gear also because he is first starting out. His pedigree is first starting out now among the Jewish people. So there's two reasons. So the Briskarov, when he objected to saying that Avram was a gear, he said, after all, a gear is someone who joins the Jewish people. So Avram didn't join the Jewish people. He was the foundation of the Jewish people. So the halachas that are associated with being a gear, after one undergoes conversion, because he does not have, he joined the Jewish people, even though he didn't have roots in the Jewish nation. So that wasn't Avram. You can't say that about Avram. But Avram, we could say, even according to the Briskarov, had a halacha of ger, and perhaps in regard to as the Abrat Saloni says, Abbas ger, and all that, because Avram, from the time he he started separating himself. And you take a look. Separate yourself. Avram accepted upon himself to a certain degree. Gerus involves loneliness. You go, you separate yourself from your past. And you join the Jewish people. And by the way, that's considered a chesed halachically towards the Jewish people that someone makes that sacrifice. So it's a path of loneliness, separating oneself. When one separates themselves from their past, that could be even before the completion of conversion. So that started when Avram left Haran or Kazdem and Haran, and probably that part was completed, that part of the Geras was completed after he separated himself from Lot. Separation it was completed when he separated himself from Lot. And we could suggest that even though he separated himself from Lot, and he became a Geras in the sense of cutting himself off, of this idea of loneliness, accepting loneliness for himself. Nevertheless, when he heard that Lot was in trouble, he ran to save Lot. And he was a Gerd Sedek at that time, certainly according to the Riva and according to Yanai, because at that time, that was the highest level that one can reach. At that time, the mitzvah of bris milah was not yet given. So because of that, we could explain, according to the bris Garub, what Yanai said, because even Avram was a ger. In terms of the separation, he was a ger. In terms of the Dushi Yisrael, he was the foundation of the Jewish nation. Now, I, I think so. So we could suggest 
But that's the shot in the Riva also. The Riva says that when does one become a can become a patriarch of the Jewish people? He can become a patriarch of the Jewish people even before Brismila. If Brismila, the mitzvah of Brismila had not yet been given, he can become a patriarch of the Jewish people when he, he come a, once he separates himself from the nations of the world because he's already a gear. And now we could say, uh, and it's interesting, Pesach, so I think Pesach, Goy Mikarev Goy, separation of the Jewish people from one nation, from one good nation to another nation, that's the holiday of Geras. Because how do we separate ourselves? Through the process, through initiating the process of Geras, of conversion, separating ourselves from the past. It doesn't mean not being concerned, but it means to separate. And it's very interesting. In, in, in uh, Bamidbar Perik Test, the Torah says, When we'll read this uh, later, on uh, the, the, the last days of Chalmoet, uh, so Rashi says, Yochav, we learned, Yochav kol hamizgayer yasa Pesach miyad. I would think Rashi says that any time someone goes to conversion, he should give this Pesach sacrifices. Tamalomer chukachas. Now, since Xeris Akasov not. Now, the question is, why would I have thought, Rashi says, on the basis of logic, if not for a apostle telling me the, the opposite, I would have thought that a gear gives the, that a, that a, that a gear gives the, uh, should, every gear has to give a carbon pass up if it goes through conversion at, in, in uh, November. So he should give a carbon Pesach in November. So halach is not that way, because we have a special Pesach. But if not for that, logic would dictate he should give a carbon, a carbon Pesach. Why is it that way? But the answer is the carbon Pesach is a carbon of Geras. And where do we learn out? The Gemara and Krisa says, where do we learn out? Uh, Brismila by Geras, we learn now Brismila by Geras from the fact that the Jewish people circumcised themselves before they gave a carbon Pesach in Egypt. So but the question is, and the and Rashi, Rashi and Shemos uh, tells us uh, that that the the uh, uh, Perikid base Pasuk Vav tells us that God gave the Jewish people in Egypt two mitzvahs, bris and, and carbon Pesach. And the question is, bris was given them before. What do you mean it was given to them then? So we could say, but here there was a special mitzvah because they were separating. Here there was a special mitzvah of Geras. Why? Because here they were separating themselves as a nation from the Egyptians. Because of that, there was a special mitzvah of brismila, of, but it was a brismila of conversion. And this, this shot my uncle said, so, the Rav. So, so in other words, the Karben Pesach and the Meshech Chachma, Rav Meir Simcha said that according to Rashi was his feeling. My uncle didn't seem to share it from the Sefer, but the, he didn't say explicitly not. The, the if somebody became a gear in the days of old, right before Pesach, and gave a carbon Pesach, he did not have to, he would not have to give a, the special sacrifice that every gear gave, because the carbon Pesach, by definition, was a sacrifice of gayrus, of conversion. So, in other words, in a sense, Pesach is the holiday of conversion. 
Pesach is the holiday of conversion. And it's conversion manifests itself in the idea of separating oneself in order to come close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Of course, we Jews, we who were born Jewish, who just automatically, who take it for granted, we have an obligation to befriend those who chose to be Jewish, who chose to commit themselves to Torah, who are perhaps on a higher level than we are. But the, the separate, separating themselves, that, 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 was a form, that was a form of conversion that was given specially to the Jews, to the Jews of Egypt who were leaving Egypt. So Pesach in a sense, Goy Mekar of Goy, it's the holiday of Geras. And Avram is the symbol of Geras. We could say, even according to the Briskarov, the idea of separating oneself. And what I want to mention in my uncle's yard site, listen, everybody knows about the intellectual giant, Torah giant that my uncle was and his fear of God and his hakpad on mitzvahs. I mean, it, it, it's beyond the, 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 the following, following in the path of his ancestors. But when you read his writings and one of his articles is called, and when you read his shiurim, you see it also. He talks about the lonely man of faith. In other words, Avram Avinu, he said, on one hand, when he talked to Mechais, hey, listen, we interact with each other. But nevertheless, I'm a gear. I separate myself from you. It's easy if you lock yourself up in a community to say, I have a different style of life. But the ability to reach greatness in, in Torah, to be the giant of the generation. When you're a Toshav also, when you live together with the Bnei Ches and you interact with the Bnei Ches, that shows, that is an example of tremendous Yerushalayim. That's a Rebbe who teaches not just orally, not just by his shiurim, and his shiurim were the greatest shiurim of the generation. But it shows, he teaches by, he teaches, he taught by example. There were people that when they attended one lectures of his, and I'm not talking about people who weren't too smart. I'm talking about people, non-observant intellectuals. And many of them used to come to his lectures. I read uh, Rabbi Shurkin, I think, wrote once that he was there when somebody, after hearing the lecture of my uncles, decided on the spot, just on the basis of the one lecture, to become observant. It wasn't just an emotional thing. It was the impact. And the impact was in showing, in, in recognizing my, my uncle's idea that on one hand, he was a Toshav. He, he was a person who could interact with the greatest intellectuals of his time. At the same time, he understood the concept of gear, of separating oneself. When the Pope came out and tried to encourage spiritual involvement, intellectual spiritual involvement, who was the one that stopped it? that could have been the biggest korban. It was my uncle who stopped it and said, no, we are not going to have meetings on religious topics. I was, when I graduated uh, college, where the speaker said, let Jews be better Jews, let Christians be better Christians, let Muslims be better Muslims. We can be better Jews by not trying to be Christians, and Christians can be better Christians by not trying to be uh, better Jews. If a, if a Christian wants to convert to Judaism, 
he wants to come close to Torah, if the Muslim wants to convert, of course we have to help them do it. That's the mitzvah of Abbas Aguirre, of love of the convert. But we, we have to recognize that there is a separation and it's B'ni B'chari Yisrael. The door is open for everyone who wants to join. But one could be a ger toshav, could be fully committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and not assume the obligations of being Jewish. And my uncle demonstrated this idea that at one time you could be a toshav, you could be involved with people on the other hand, you know how to draw the line. You know how to separate yourself. It's not just the gear that has to separate themselves, especially in our society today, and especially the way society is going. We all have to know how, in a sense, to be gay rim, how to be able to separate ourselves. Okay. You think if anyone has any questions, please put it in the uh, in the chat. If anyone has any questions, so did the Raivet say that Nefesh Asher Asher Bacharon is part of the mitzvah of Avas Hashem? Are you explaining? The, the Raivet just said that's a Nefesh Asher Asher Bacharon, but the Sifri and on Avas on, on the mitzvah of Avas Hashem says that the mitzvah of Avas Hashem is bringing people closer to God, like Avram, and he mentions the same pasuk, mm. which the Raivet mentions. What was the Gemara in Chagiga that? The Gemara in Chagiga says that Abraham is Rosh Legerim. Okay. It's the beginning of Chagiga. Mm -hmm. Because Abraham was the first Jew. He was a non Jew and then became a Jew. Mm -hmm. So the question is, does it mean he became a gay or he did, or it doesn't mean that? It doesn't look like there are any other questions. <laughs> 